Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the Psalms from the Bible, which were written as songs and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer about the Psalms. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Fortunately, this psalm is number 6 in both translations, so let's take a look at what it says. Unto the end, in verses, a psalm for David, for the octave. Once again, a brief title and description of the psalm. O Lord, rebuke me not in thy indignation, nor chastise me in thy wrath. We plead with God for mercy, even though he has reasons to be upset with us. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. We sin because of our weakness, so we require mercy. The word bones refers to our bodies, which need healing, and which, according to the book of Daniel, will be brought back to life by God. Indeed, our bones are in trouble, as they'll eventually die and fade away if God doesn't do something to prevent it. And my soul is troubled exceedingly. But thou, O Lord, how long? We cry out to God because of the severity and length of our suffering, pleading with him to give us relief from our troubles. Turn to me, O Lord, and deliver my soul. O oh, save me for thy mercy's sake. Again, we plead to be saved not just for our own sake, or because of the love of God, but because it will show God's perfect mercy. For there is no one in death that is mindful of thee, and who shall confess to thee in hell? The ancient Hebrew understanding of death was a place called Sheol, dark, silent, and inactive, like a real grave. When this psalm says that the dead pay no mind to God, that's what it's referring to. However, if by death, David means instead those who are in hell, it's essentially correct to say that those in hell don't dwell on God. They can't bear to. I have labored in my groanings. Every night I will wash my bed. I will wash my couch with my tears. The struggle and work of our lives is at times almost unbearable, whether we literally cry about it every night or not. My eye is troubled through indignation. I have grown old amongst all my enemies. The troubling of the eye is another reference to the tears of the last verse. Certainly, there's enough indignation to fill an ocean with tears, we often feel that our enemies just grow stronger while we fade away. However, Moses was around 80 when God first called him to free the people of Israel. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord hath heard my supplication. The Lord hath received my prayer. God hears those who are in need, and when he takes action, evildoers are better off repenting. Let all my enemies be ashamed and be very much troubled. Let them be turned back, and be ashamed very speedily. Again, think of Moses, an old man, and an exiled shepherd with a weak voice. And yet, because God was with him, the mightiest nation on earth was brought to its knees, offering he and his people immense gifts in exchange for mercy. Our own weakness is unimportant. What matters is God's strength. So, Psalm 6 is a song of anguish, pleading for relief from suffering and injustice at the hands of wicked men, but culminating in a delightful note of hope and faith that God will take action to answer the prayers of his faithful. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.